Hey there, and welcome to Cinema Recap. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be taking a look at an American adventure drama called Togo. Spoilers ahead. Our movie opens with a sled team racing through the Alaskan tundra, a dark-coated Siberian husky named Togo serving as lead sled dog, and trainer Leonard Sapala at the helm. Leonard guides the team into the town of Nome after a week out on the ice, when he's immediately told that there's been a diphtheria outbreak while he was gone. Leonard asks about his wife, Constance, but the man tells him that she's fine, as only children have been affected by the outbreak. An antitoxin serum was found in the far-off town of Fairbanks, but no one knows how to get from Fairbanks to Nome. Now Leonard heads to the town bar, where everyone is gathered to discuss their options. Apparently, the antitoxin was found at Fairbanks Railroad Hospital and could be put on a train from there to Ninana, but that's still 300 miles from Nome. There are planes in Fairbanks, but a storm's brewing on the horizon. A distinguished-looking man in the crowd asks Leonard what he thinks, as he'd just been out in the wilds. But Leonard only confirms that the storm would be too big for planes to fly in. When prodded, he explains that his legendary lead dog, Togo, chose to race into town instead of chasing after a herd of caribou, which could only mean that the storm would be very bad indeed. With planes out of the question, one of three men in suits say that Leonard once raced a team all the way to Ninana and got back in only four days. Everyone then turns and looks at Leonard, but he refuses, instead decides to leave the bar. Now outside, the storm clouds brew near every second. A doctor follows Leonard and asks for a ride back to the hospital, which Leonard accepts. After the doctor heads inside, Leonard takes a peek into the hospital mirrors and sees the place packed with sick children. Now Leonard finally made it home, where his husky puppies run wild underfoot. As he's waxing down his sled runners, the wife asks him whether he'll make that journey to Ninana. Leonard doesn't know if he can, but at the same time, the sight at the hospital broke his heart. The discussion continues as they get into bed for the night. Now she thinks that he shouldn't take Togo, as he's already 12 years old and thus not capable of undertaking such a harsh journey without dying shortly after. Leonard, on the other hand, believes that he won't survive the journey without Togo. There's a knock at the door and Mayor George is escorted in. He tells Leonard that the planes can't make it, so they'll have to use the dogs. Leonard prepares the sled and says goodbye to his wife. Despite her protests, he takes Togo to lead. They ride out of town in the early morning, with the townspeople wishing them well as they pass through. Our team heads into the storm, and Leonard flashes back to 12 years prior, when Togo was just born. As the runt of the litter, too small and weak to survive, Constance babied Togo ignoring her husband's protests. The puppy survived the first few weeks and spent a little more time with the two adults than the other dogs because he kept digging out of the kennel. Despite his underdeveloped size, Togo is fast and Constance urges Leonard to make him a sled dog. Now she's upset by how cruel Leonard is, so he has to remind her that they're not pets or children, but work animals. And as he's lecturing her, Togo races off with his belt. So Leonard winds up giving Togo to a man named Victor, while his wife sulks. However, the puppy is such a nuisance that Victor promptly returns him. The flashback ends, and we're back in the heart of the storm, with Leonard herding his team of sled dogs down the face of a mountain. The storm provides poor visibility, having Leonard make a bad turn causing the dogs to slip. The sled capsizes, and the whole team almost falls to their death off a cliff. But Togo manages to swerve just before it's too late. With Leonard urging him on, Togo struggles back to safety and the dogs behind follow his lead. Now together, they narrowly clear the mountain and head to a roundhouse to recuperate. Inside, an Inuit woman named Atiktalik patches up Togo's wounded paws and sings to him while he rests. We have another flashback with Togo as a puppy. Now that Victor has returned him and Constance doesn't condone murder, Leonard is pretty much stuck with this annoying pup. He spends days reinforcing the cage so that Togo, who he's been calling Satan, can't get out. With the cage reinforced, Leonard prepares his adult dogs for a sled ride and they drive off. Alone in the kennel, Togo frantically tries to dig himself free while his litter mates watch. He makes dozens of holes and eventually escapes, racing in the direction that Leonard and the sled dogs went. 
Somehow, despite being one little puppy, he catches up to that sled, causing confusion and tangled reins amongst the dogs. Leonard orders the entire team to halt. But Togo sees a herd of caribou nearby and races after him, which causes all the sled dogs to follow. They chase the caribou through the forest and the sled, Leonard included, careens into a lake. After that incident, Leonard reinforces the tack room to keep Togo inside, because obviously the kennel cages can't hold him. Trapped alone in the tack room, Togo whines and whimpers at the doors until he notices a small crack up high near the ceiling to escape from. Somehow he makes it up and through. Constance, seeing his little head poke through the narrow opening, wishes him well, luck, as Togo heads out to chase the sled team once again. Now the flashback ends, and Leonard's in the storm once more, preparing to leave the roundhouse. He tells the Inuit man working there that he's going to take a shortcut to save a day's worth of time, but the man replies that it's not worth the risk, especially now when the ice is so unpredictable. But Leonard stubbornly ignores the advice. So he and the sled team take the shortcut across a frozen river. However, as they're running, the ice begins to crack beneath. Leonard urges them forward, racing to beat the ice. Back at Nome Hospital, children cough and turn in their sick beds. In another part of town, the mayor writes out an article to telegram the press so that people know of the diphtheria outbreak, as well as Leonard's attempt to help. The news spreads around the country and even makes it on the radio. Meanwhile, Leonard and his pups have cleared the icy river and made it to another roundhouse. It seems that Togo's famous among the Inuits for his bravery and speed. Leonard, watching Togo sleep, tells the Inuit man how he tried to give him away twice, and another flashback begins. Constance and Leonard are on a trail, with the puppy Togo strapped into the carriage behind him. While they're riding, we find out that Leonard had an apprenticeship in Norway, but gave it up to come to Alaska and find gold. Together, they leave Togo with a kind Irish woman, who wanted a husky to keep the wolves at bay in the winter. As soon as the couple leave, Togo winds at the door. The two get back to their ranch, and Leonard readies the sled dogs to hit the trail once again while Constance ignores him, upset that he's given Togo away. Meanwhile, back at the Irish woman's house, Togo restlessly paces the floor, searching for a way out. He's about to give up when he sees Leonard's sled from miles away, and the sight excites him so much that he leaps out and crashes through the closed window. Glass shards are flying everywhere as that window breaks and he's free, bleeding as he's running towards Leonard. Eventually, he catches up with Leonard and the sled dogs. Leonard's exasperated, but has begun to realize that Togo wants to run with the team. He's still too young and small, but Leonard has no choice but to replace the last dog in the sled team with Togo. As he rearranges the dog positions, Togo sits up front at the head of the sled dogs, as if asking to be their leader. Well, Leonard's not going to allow that, but he does get Togo suited up in the last row. They set out, and Togo's more than keeping up with the dog by his side, easily outrunning her, and so Leonard stops the sled and moves Togo up one position. They race forward, but once again, Togo outruns the dog next to him. By the time Leonard and the team make it home, Togo is leading the team. Constance is thrilled to see him and races to pet him as Leonard excitedly explains how he outran every single dog. Our flashback ends and Constance walks into a building in town. Turns out that 12 hours after Leonard left, the governor announced that the antitoxin would be passed from Ninana to Leonard by more dog teams. And the mayor seems pleased with this outcome as it means that Leonard has less of a journey ahead. But Constance is furious. She explains that Leonard must be much further than the mayor's anticipated, because he would try to take the shortcut over the ice river. This means that it's possible for both dog teams to not cross each other, especially if Leonard didn't know about the information to begin with. All they can do is pray that somehow the antitoxin exchanges hands and Leonard makes it home. Meanwhile, Leonard and the team run through a forest. He's getting tired and falls asleep on the road while the sled dogs take over. Now a dog team headed by a man named Henry sees him rush by and they almost miss each other. By some miracle, however, Leonard hears Henry calling his name and turns around. The two men leap off their sleds and hug. At a nearby roundhouse, the mushers and their dogs rest while Henry tells Leonard how the antitoxin is being passed on relay. He also can't help but notice how tired Togo looks, drained of all his energy, and so he tells Leonard as much. Togo's a legendary dog, but even he has a limit. 
Out of concern, Henry begs Leonard to leave Togo here at the roundhouse, where he'll take care of him until spring, but Leonard refuses. So the next morning, now carrying the antitoxin, Leonard heads out back the way he came, across the river of ice. Right, it's dangerous, but he knows that going the long way would wear down Togo to the brink of death. As they run across the crackling ice, Leonard has a flashback to 10 years earlier, at the all-Alaskan sweepstakes that made Togo famous. Bets were placed against him, as no one thought Leonard would win with Tiny Togo at the front. And besides that, they're also racing against Scotty Allen, a world-renowned musher. Scotty's team was in the lead, but Leonard quickly caught up in the last leg and won. His wife's there at the finish line to congratulate him, and they even won $5,000 in prize money. That night, Leonard thanked Constance for believing in Togo when no one else did. Our flashback ends and Leonard's on the ice. The dogs have stopped and water froths up from where the ice is already cracked. He checks the compass but is unsure how to go on as the path in front of them has shattered into shards of ice. So he urges the dogs forward in a flat out sprint while behind him the ice breaks entirely. The sled is slipping on a crack, but the strength of the dog team saves Leonard and presses them forward. They're just about to make it when ice breaks off from the shore, and they're left stranded on a single sheet of ice, drifting further from the shore by the second. Leonard, thinking quickly, takes Togo and throws him across the water and onto the other side. Tethered to the others, Togo pushes forward, pulling the entire sheet of ice closer to the shoreline so that the other dogs can jump across. Well, they narrowly make it and slowly tread back to the first roundhouse to recuperate. As they rest, the Inuit woman, Atiktali, cries. She tells the other man, in their indigenous language, that Togo's dying. Leonard asks why she's crying, but the man refuses to tell him the truth, instead inventing a lie about smoke from the fire clouding her eyes. Now back in Nome, Constance readies her remaining dogs to meet Leonard halfway. She asks Gunner, a musher in town, to help her. And he heads out in the sled while she waits anxiously at home. Now Leonard tries to get Togo to ride in the sled for the last 20 miles of their journey, but he's refusing. Instead, taking his place as the lead dog. They set off, climbing up and down the mountain the way they came. However, that storm intensifies, and Leonard can't see through the raging snow and wind. He asks Togo to lead the way, and prays he can. They continue onwards in snow, so thick they can't see where they're headed, and Leonard ends up falling asleep. When he wakes up again, it's pitch black, the snow still falling, and the dogs have stopped moving. They're all curled up and asleep, and so Leonard stumbles forward to Togo, begging him to keep moving or they'll all die out there in the cold. Togo doesn't move, and suddenly from behind him, a lamplight glimmers. It appears that they made their way to the last roundhouse after all, and Gunner has found him. The dogs are ushered inside to the shed while Leonard carries Togo in his arms. Now that his part in the journey is over, Leonard can sit and rest by the fire while the last musher takes the antitoxin into town. Headed by Balto as lead dog and Gunner as musher, news reporters see their arrival and write down the names. Back at the hospital the next day, the children are no longer coughing but running around and playing happily, which means the antitoxin worked. Although he's only rested for a day, Leonard is anxious to get home and leaves the roundhouse with Togo at his side. When he gets there, knowing that Togo doesn't have a lot of time left, he allows the dog to sleep on the bed for the very first time. Guests are coming in all morning, bringing in gifts, to thank Leonard and Togo for their efforts. But Leonard can't bring himself to speak much. They all note that Togo's barely able to move, he just sleeps all day by the fire. Late at night, a child from the hospital comes to visit. Now that she's been treated with the antitoxin, she's no longer sick and has Leonard to thank for it, giving him a wood carving of Togo. Togo going to die? She asks plainly if Togo is going to die. And that question makes Leonard get up and leave the cabin. Now outside, he mentions that he isn't prepared at all for Togo's eventual death, and that his fear of running the dog to death has come true. He regrets ever opening his heart to Togo, knowing how crushed he'll be soon. And the next morning, Leonard gets ready for work. Togo's following his every move, despite having an injured paw. Constance packs a lunch, and Leonard heads out to ready the sled dogs, leaving Togo in the house because of his age and injury. Togo's distraught, whining, scratching at the door, as Leonard leaves with the other dogs. 
Constance tries to bribe him into the kitchen with a piece of bacon, but he refuses. You want some bacon? Instead, he somehow pries the door open with his paw and escapes, racing after the sled even as Constance calls him back. Leonard hears his wife shouting and turns around to see Togo running towards him. His vision blurs, shifting between Togo as a puppy to Togo now, 12 years old, racing after the sled dogs to lead him. He gets on his knees and greets Togo with open arms. You see, Leonard had always thought that Togo lived for the sled but it turns out that Togo was just happy to be next to him. For the next two years of his life, they went on walks instead of runs. And Togo even became a father, siring several generations of pups. Mushers from across the country fought for a puppy from Togo's line, and they came to have their own breed name, Sapala Siberians. The screen fades to black and we find out that the events of the movie were real. 20 sled teams participated in that 1925 serum relay, with 19 of those teams running an average of 31 miles each. But one team, led by Leonard and Togo, ran 264 miles. A statue was erected in NYC Central Park commemorating the serum run. But it was of Balto, the dog that completed the race, and not Togo, who ran most of it. Wow, that was the end. Ah, dogs get to me. Yep, that was good. Togo was produced in 2019 by Walt Disney Pictures, featuring Willem Dafoe and Julianne Nicholson. So come on, who do you think deserves to be commemorated in history? Is it Balto, the dog that ended the race, or Togo, who ran the longest? Why don't you let us know in those comments down below with that hashtag cinema recap. Thanks for watching. Till next time.